welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be sharing the few regrets that we have now that we have officially been living in our home for almost two months, which is crazy. It feels like it was literally just yesterday that we moved in. But before I get into the actual regrets, I wanted to answer two questions that I get in almost every single video in my DMs on Instagram, in the comments. Like these are the top two questions. So I just kind of wanted to answer them, get them out of the way. And hopefully you guys see this video or if you have this question and you haven't asked or you were thinking about asking, you don't have to anymore. So the first question that I get, it is the most asked question is, who is our builder? So I know I've said this in a couple of videos, not in every single video, but for privacy reasons, I will not be sharing our builder. Not now, not in the near future, or not anytime, well, never. So the reason why I don't feel comfortable sharing um, who our builder is, is one, because I am a, a lifestyle motherhood channel. So my kids do come out in my videos every so often, not very often, but every here and there they do pop out. And I just don't feel comfortable sharing that information. Two, I have friends who I've met through YouTube who also have channels and they are smaller channels and they had all their personal information blasted all over social media in their comments people stalking them and I just honestly would rather none of that happen. So if I can prevent it or try to prevent it as much as I can, I will again for the safety of not only my kids but myself and my husband and just in general just my entire family. So that is also the reason why I have never shown the outside of our home or even our neighborhood. I know that I share a lot of you guys, uh, I know that I share a lot of information with you guys over on Instagram a lot when it comes to the house, but our neighborhood, uh, the outside of our home, all that I don't share and I don't think I will ever share. Question number two is how long was the entire process? So the entire process from beginning to end, so from the moment we signed the contract for the lot to the day that we got the keys. It was nine months and about two weeks. So we signed our contract on November 8th, 2020. That is when we pretty much accepted the lot. And then we got our keys on August the 24th of 2021. So nine months, nine months and a couple of weeks. But that was the entire process. And I believe the building, the actual building process took six months. So like the house was pretty much built in six months. And the other three months was pretty much just waiting for the permit. And then like a few delays that we had because a lot of stuff was like back ordered and like there wasn't enough workers and whatnot. But yeah, the whole process from beginning to end was nine months. Now, moving on to our regrets. I actually only have four regrets, but I still want to share them with you guys just in case you guys kind of have like the same, you know, things going on. So I will say our very first regret is the paint. It hurts my heart so much to say it because I was all for painting the house before we moved in which I am still all for. I feel like you, sh you should still have your house painted before you move in because you don't want to move in here and then, you know, start moving stuff around and like getting your tile, your carpet, your flooring dirty because, you know, whatever the case might be. So I still say that you should paint your house before you move in, but builders, and I think that's pretty much all builders, at least here in Arizona, they provide you with flat paint. We made the mistake of not asking what, what type of paint and also they didn't share with us what type of paint it was. So it was like pretty much they didn't care to share and we didn't know any better than to like to ask what type of paint it was. But it was it is flat paint. So I am a mom of four boys. So you guys can only imagine what that means. So they you know their heads are dirty. They come from school inside. They touch the walls. So the first time I tried cleaning up the wall the paint came right off. So the moment that you try to clean flat paint or like stains from flat paint, the paint comes right off. Even if it's like, I will say like if it's a smaller stain and you can like very, if it comes off with like a very soft touch, then you're lucky. But if it's like a bigger stain or like a deeper stain where like you actually have to like rub on it, the paint will come off. So I really wish we would have asked what type of paint it was because had I known it was flat, we would have just gone with whatever color they did. And then before we moved in, we would have hired someone to like come in and, you know, 
paint the walls because again with kids at least with my boys i have to be you know going back and forth so luckily they did leave us a bucket of paint so like if something gets too dirty to where i know i'm not even going to be able to scrub it off i literally just paint over it it's not a big deal but i hate that instead of just being able to wipe it off i have to paint over it so at some point hopefully we're gonna like just do the i think it, they have like a semi-gloss coat which sucks because it's pretty much like repainting the entire house but we might do that or not if not we'll just wait till the walls pretty much get pretty dirty maybe sometime next year before summer hits we'll have someone come in and just just repaint the entire house because yeah flat paint is not it guys especially if you have kids like flat paint is just not it's just not it so that is my regret number one our regret number two or my regret number two i should say it's the hardware so we paid so much money for the hardware i honestly can't give you a dollar amount because i don't have it in front of me and i honestly don't remember but if you haven't watched my upgrades video, like the upgrade cost video, um, I will link it up so you guys can go check that out. I go over pricing on there. But I want to say for hardware, easily we paid over $2,000 and that's because they come in bundles. So it was like hardware, the bundle for hardware for the doors, bundle number two, hardware for the bathrooms, and bundle number, number three handles, uh, bundle for... I can't talk it was a bundle for hardware for the kitchen so it was three different bundles so i think that all together it was probably like three thousand dollars or well over two thousand dollars and we could have easily done that ourselves our big thing or like my husband big thing is he works a lot and he didn't want to come in here and have to charge start changing stuff had i known it was super easy to change like the door handles then i probably wouldn't have upgraded those the kitchen i'm like the kitchen i'm still okay with just because we had to go in there and like drill holes ourselves and i didn't want like stuff to be crooked and whatnot so the kitchen not so much but like the bathrooms and all the door hardware we could have easily done it ourselves um one i could have just I have been looking on Amazon, Home Depot, Lowe's, and it gets me so mad, which I should probably stop doing. I have been like looking up, I have been looking up the pricing for this stuff, and we could have paid like less than half of what we paid for the stuff that we paid for them to install. So hardware, I would say either wait until you move in and buy it yourself, or even the chrome stuff that they put in, you can easily spray paint it yourself. That is the other thing, which I still haven't done the bathroom hardware for the guest bathroom and the powder room. I still need to um, spray paint the chrome light fixture. Um, but if you guys follow me on Instagram, you guys know I have been spray painting everything black and that's because our like all of our hardware is matte black. But yeah, you can save money that way. You can easily just go buy a couple of spray can bottles and then just spray paint um, your hardware. So yeah, hardware, if you're like my husband and you don't wanna walk in and start doing stuff, then I maybe suggest do it because it was it, i will say it was very nice to walk in here and not have to do anything like not change anything actually the only thing that we did change was the kitchen faucet because if you guys remember that thing was hideous and they were trying to sell me one for 950 dollars, and i was like yeah no thank you so i ended up ordering one at home at lowe's i think for like 200 dollars. but other than that it was like really nice to just walk in here and do nothing not change a thing like just not do anything we were pretty happy with everything that we had but to save money yes hardware hardware is a no so don't do hardware if you don't have to um the next thing that we do regret and this is actually an upgrade that we regret not doing is our kitchen island with the waterfall so if you guys remember our old house when we changed the countertops we ended up doing the waterfall which we didn't even know it was a thing but my friend's husband did it for us and he mentioned it and we were like oh yeah cool it sounds good and he did it and it came out so nice so when we moved in here the model home had a waterfall edges and we're like oh yeah well, let's do that too you know we had it at our old house and we loved it um one it's more for looks but two it's also a lot easier like to clean up so my husband is more of the like who cares let's just do it and i'm more like uh no let's not let's just wait we can do it later it'll probably be cheaper so it was pretty pricey to do it with the builder but now that we are in here i do wish we would have done the waterfall on the kitchen island so that is regret number three and then my final regret is not speaking up 
enough. So when we were coming in here, I remember we used to come here. I used to come at least three times a week. My husband would be like, no, you're going too much. You're going too much. And I will say that, you know what? I'm going to sit here and throw my husband under the bus because I feel like he deserves to, <laughs> to be thrown under the bus. So I know that I mentioned my realtor a couple of times and she really wasn't any help during the process. She was pretty much like non-existent. And I don't know if it was because when we first signed the contract for the lot, when we were at the sales office, the sales agent told us like going forward, you're not going to need your realtor at all. So you can pretty much kiss her goodbye because the builder or like us, we will only communicate with you, not with your realtor. So we can CC her on everything or you guys can CC her, but you pretty much don't need her anymore. And I don't know if that's the reason why she just like decided to be like non-existent throughout the process. But also she lived about an hour away. And when I found that out, right when we had met her, I told my husband, no, let's not do it. She lives too far. Like she's just not it. Like she has a great personality and we got along with her just fine. But this isn't about making a friend. This is about like her helping us because we're buying a very expensive home. Um, but yeah, so that was, I'm throwing him under the bus because that was his mistake. But anyway, so I used to come here three, four times a week and my husband would be like, oh, you're going too much. You're going too much. But I will say that even if you can come every day, it's better because you catch more and more mistakes. So as we were going through the process and I was catching things here and there, after a while, my husband's like, no, just don't email him. Like the construction manager, like just don't email him. He's going to hate us. He probably already hates you. Like just wait, maybe they'll fix it next week. We'll come next week and see if it's fixed. If it's not fixed, then you can reach out to him. So a lot of things kept going like that. And then I ultimately didn't say anything for a lot of stuff. And now we are two months in and I still have people coming in, in and out of my house fixing stuff because I didn't speak up. So I do wish I wouldn't have listened I wouldn't have uh listened to my husband and I would have just spoken up whenever, you know, I had the chance. Because right now the reason why they are coming in is because we have a lot of cosmetic issues that we found or that the inspector found as he was did the inspection for our home. The other bad thing is that the inspector was not able to come in and do our inspection before we signed. He did it actually 2 days after we got our keys. So once he sent us the report, we sent it over to our construction manager and we're like, here, we need you to fix all this, which thankfully they were all for it. They are, they are fixing everything on the list. It's just that it's taking forever. So, um, remember the biggest thing was like the trust, um, the trust, some of like the wood was cracked and broken and the AC was leaking. Those were like the main two things. The trust they came to fix in like two weeks after we moved in. So that was pretty quick. But the AC, they fixed it. I think it took them like a month or a month. Yeah, a little bit over a month to come fix the leakage of the AC. So that first month, half of our house was warm. And then, um, and then after that, remember, I don't know if you guys remember the nails that we had in the powder room that were like sticking out of the wall. Those just got fixed about a week and a half ago. And then the dining room wall, which I noticed, uh, but he was like, no, they're going to fix it. He said, they're going to come paint before we actually moved in, like before we got the keys and they never did. And I didn't say anything until, you know, the whole inspection thing came through and the guy noticed it, that like the paint, it was like a two tone paint. Um, so then they sent in a guy to paint and he was like, oh no, like that's not, that's not a paint issue. It's the drywall. So then, then the drywall guy came in and he's like, this is not a drywall issue. This is a paint issue. So then they sent another paint guy come in and he's like, well, I'm not sure. And I'm like, you know what? Please just paint the wall. You, they sent you to paint the wall. So please just do me a favor. I don't mean to sound like a jerk, but do me a favor, paint the wall. If it's not the paint, then I'll deal with, you know, our construction manager later. But do me a favor, just take that doubt out of my mind and paint the freaking wall. Like that's what you're here for. Just please do it. And he did. And that was a problem. So if the first guy that came in would have painted the wall, then it would have been done and over with, which the paint guy was actually really nice. And all. I wasn't a like jerk to him. I wasn't yelling at him, but inside I just was so frustrated, but he was super nice. Um, he painted the wall. He painted, um, if you guys saw the, um, that we painted the window trims and the door trims black. Like on parts where he saw like that we got a little bit of spray paint on, like he's he painted over those. He didn't have to, but he was really nice and 
he painted a lot of stuff that he wasn't supposed to but he still did it um so yeah I mean that was that was good but I mean it's taken two months pretty much almost two months to get all this stuff done and then for our guest bathroom like our sink is still right there like it's untouched if you guys saw that last video the guy came in uninstalled it then put it back because he had the wrong one and just left it like that so that sink doesn't even work like it's not functioning and we reached out to our construction manager on monday and nope we haven't heard back from him and today's thursday so i really doubt we'll hear back from him tomorrow because usually on fridays it's like he's non-existent i mean at this point it's like he's non non-existent all the time so yeah those are our biggest regrets those are the things that i wish we would have done differently or gone about them differently um uh, but yeah that i think that is going to conclude today's video i think it's actually going to be a pretty long video um i also wanted to go over like the um upgrades that i wish or that we wish we would have done but i don't want to make this a super super long video so i'll probably leave that for another video also i do want to do a q a video i know that you guys have a lot of questions i constantly get questions in the comments and my dms on instagram um and i typically do answer you guys over on instagram and stuff but i just want to make a video answering those questions on a video because not everyone follows me on instagram so if you have that question then you know i might be able to answer it for you before you even ask so with that being said if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer in regards to the new build or like the whole process or how it's been since we moved in please go ahead and leave it in the comments and I will do a video answering all of your guys' questions, any questions that you guys have. And yeah, I think that is going to be everything for today's video. As usual, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.